welcome in to episode 30 of our Let's Play Humankind series at top difficulty. Barring something strange happening, this will be the final episode in this series. Stay tuned to see how we can end this thing. Also, at the very end, I'll go over uh, some of my plans uh, for some future videos, as well as what our next Let's Play series will kind of feature around, so you'll know what's upcoming here on the YouTube channel as well. If you need to catch up on any of the content leading up to this moment, our most likely finale episode in this series, in the, the des description below, you'll be able to find a link to episode one in this series. You can catch up on all of the action that took us up to this point. We are on turn 253. We are playing as the Cubans, and we are getting ready to launch our final space project to bring about our end game condition. Let's see how we can get that to come about and just how powerful this empire will become before we hit that end game condition. Right back into our capital of a nug. 124 population strong. We have our complex of wonders that is currently being built. We have a beautiful, our Stupa and Duba mix right here that is now going into uh, the, what will be our Empire State Building, our Eiffel Tower, our mausoleum at Halicarnassus. We also have one of our Impressa Pharmaceuticas here, and it has become quite the lovely uh, conjunction here uh, in our capital city. Uh, just really, this really works out quite nicely for us. Uh, we also... Uh, have a hacienda over here, so this area really kind of showing off quite a bit of what we were able to accomplish during this game uh, here in our capital, which is also one of our largest cities. Uh, you can see our FIMS production is huge. We are currently drastically over population cap, uh, so you can see uh, we are at 124 of 120, but this does not matter when you're playing the Cubans because your Impressa Pharmaceuticas give you plus five food if you're overpopulated per farmer. So we're getting 42 times five food because we're in a status of being overpopulated. It's really, really crazy. That's a ton of food. I mean, it's an enormous amount of food. Uh, we're also getting plus five industry per worker, plus five industry per trader, and plus five science per researcher because we have a settled city. And in addition to that, for every pharmaceutica, we're getting plus 10 stability per pharmaceuticals on all cities. This is crazy. This this district is insane, and it is making me very happy. Uh, the Cubans are very powerful. I didn't... I had I had undervalued them, I think, for quite some time. This Let's Play has proven me, uh, proven to me that they are fantastically good. Uh, so, very impressed by that. We have one turn left on the Empire State Building. Wanted to get that in. Uh, we were also kind of working towards getting several of our extractors in for... Uh, uranium. Uh, so we have several uranium uh, extractors that are going in. We have one going in right after this turn as well. And realistically, we'll probably end up maybe even buying this one out. I'm not sure. We'll see how fast we can get them in because uh, we want to get those uranium extractors in and then we will progress to our final project, our Mars colony here, which will trigger our end game condition. In the meantime, obviously, we're trying to, to uh, gain as many uh, stars as we can. I've actually already pushed to one of the Aesthete stars, which is difficult to get. Those numbers are very high. Uh, we don't have any science stars or merchant stars, and we'll probably ac accumulate a couple of these over time. Don't plan on getting any more expansionist stars, and we might take a crack at the Builder Star. Probably not, though, because I think we're just going to be kind of beelining for our endgame condition here. Just see how quick we can get this thing wrapped up and done. Uh, we have a substantial lead in fame. We now have 21.3 thousand fame, and we're not really even pushing for stars in this era. There is a lot of fame available to you in the contemporary era. Is stars, but additionally, on top of that, all of the different projects you can run on the space race, as well as the geosynchronous satellite projects, uh, as well as the text at the very end of the tech tree, there's so much fame available to you in the contemporary era. So again, if you're if you're trying to catch up to somebody getting to the contemporary era, you, there's options potentially to do that, but you have to be able to stop that person from ending the game using one of the end game conditions. The space race one being the fastest uh, end game condition, typically that you can get to. Uh, so, with that, let's hit the end turn button and get things rolling in our final episode of our Let's Play Humankind series at top difficulty. Here we go. 
Eating pop. If you are going to go for economic domination of the world, the Empire State Building will provide the offices to plan and execute it. Beautiful. Probably should have looked at our, our money increase. I think it went up by like over 1500 probably right there. Uh, there's our completed wonder triangle. It's very nice. Very nice little wonder triangle right there. Uh, love. Love. Okay. We have allies in need. And territory stealing. Army from Plosif starts stealing and go meet. Okay. All right. I forgot he's playing an expansionist. Ha. Huh. So an aggressive move, and one that I'm not going to counter, because, you know, I don't have an Impreza there yet. We didn't even put this aluminum in. We'll just let him take that back. Uh, we will, however, move this. We're going to move this fleet. Uh, we're going to start pushing this fleet in this direction, because... I don't want them crossing over and getting into any of my land and attempting to steal more territories. Uh, that's the expansionist ability being used. So, right, he doesn't have to declare war. He can always trespass for free uh, because he's, he's an expansionist. Uh, and he can also make those those stealing of claims uh, with, with armies. This can also be done with, uh, with armies of spies, by the way. I've actually lost territories without knowing it was even happening to me because I didn't have enough uh, detection in my in my empire to know that that army was even there and the army just stole a territory from me using the expansion stability. The expansion stability can be very potent in these late game uh, scenarios. So the last couple eras, that expansion stability, especially if you've got some high level um, kind of prowler type armies, any armies uh, uh, that could be that could be stealthed, basically. You can get them in and actually use that ability and never even know uh, that this is happening. I'm relatively certain, unless they change that uh, over time. I like... This is cool, actually. I like the aerodrome right here on the coast. I didn't build that. That was... Uh, the AI built that. That's a cool look. I like that a lot, actually. Ah, the game is so beautiful. All right. So these guys are going to hang out. We're just going to make sure nothing wonky goes on there. And I guess we got to be watching for the same thing probably over here. Uh, oh, we have more rebels that have popped up into our land as well. I don't know where these guys came from. Maybe maybe from here, probably, or from Plosive's land. Okay, so we are now going to uh, put down our final project. And it will go right where we put all the other projects, which is right here. Overlooking our Great Barrier Reef. Also overlooking our... Uh, there's, what is it, we got a Colossus over here as well. Uh, it's very beautiful. And our Sydney Opera House over here in the corner. So you can see our, just like, this land is just beautiful. Plus we have uh, the Gunung Mulu over here. I mean, we, the, the spawn was fun. This has been a really fun game uh, due to like a bunch of different reasons. Gonna be placed there as, oh no, what did we build? Oh, it's because this is getting put in. So what if I take that out? That's that was a mistake. Potential mistake. If I trash that, do we do we do it still? Oh. Whew. Otherwise we're gonna have to look for another spot. There probably is another spot, but Yikes. Alright, let's let's not put that uranium in, I guess. We have access to uranium. Not enough uranium probably, but we'll start getting people to work. Yeah, we can't put that one in. That that one's uh, that one's gonna be off limits to us because of our placement. We didn't really think about the we didn't think about that ex that piece of expansion uh, for the project when we went into to thinking about this particular piece of the puzzle. Uh, let's just get people working on the Mars colony. Uh, we'll have uh, one of the cities I think was still building a uranium deposit. I think our capital was. So we'll let them do that. I don't think this project requires any more. That no, we have enough aluminum so we don't need to put the aluminum in so we could just continue working it and we're, you can see we're gonna get this down very rapidly and we could probably switch some of our other cities to it as well what's this worth nine industries so that, that's not something that we're gonna actually do check let's just check through all of our cities and make sure that we're on the correct builds our colony we'll get uranium mine i can see us doing this and then we'll put uh then we'll put them into the space race our colony and probably we'll just replace all of this with that. So seven turns left, essentially, unless something strange happens. 
Uh, and probably shorter than that, right? Because once we get this uranium in, that, that timer will go down because we'll have uh, more uranium. So the percentage uh, added of construction time will go down and we'll be also putting our capital in it. So we probably have really just a few turns to go before we uh, are realizing our end game condition. I, part of me says I want to put in more of our Imprezas, our Impreza Pharmaceuticas, just to see what what we could get our FIMS numbers up to when we got these all in. Because we're not even close. Like in our capital. How many more do we have to put in our capital? One, two. Oh, only two in our capital. So we got a bunch of them in. Okay, that makes me feel better. Uh, because I, I wanted to know, yeah, like how how good can our cities get? I mean, the ca our capital is a pretty good indicator of how good your cities can get. With, with 125 population being... 20 plus over pop cap, we're still making 1800 food. Now, given we do have Angkor Wat, so it's a little bit, <laughs> there's a little bit of like food surplus there, but if we scroll to a couple of our other cities, Urim is over pop cap by a little bit, 422 excess food. Uh, we're just, we're, we're constantly, Huatu is, has terrible land and they now have excess food because they just got to that over pop cap status. Yeah, the funny part is you want that over pop cap status or you're not getting a substantial amount of food, right? Uh, which is kind of interesting. Like, Agra, for example, big 837 excess food here. Uh, we're just rolling in money. And, and they're not even over pop cap. They're not over pop cap. Uh, the over pop cap costs you a lot of food and things like that, but I think you get a, a overall boon to food if you're over pop cap, even when you have the, when you, when you have the Impressive Pharmaceuticas in. We also have Big Ben over here. There's all kinds of cool stuff going on in our empire. All right, uh, let's check our treaties really Welcome. quickly. Let us speak honestly because that's with what each we other. do. We're trading with Icarus. We have one turn. We could possibly trade for some more stuff, which would be nice. And we'll renounce that. Oh, no. Wondering if you're a partner or an impediment. Trading, trading oh, uh, thoroughly with everybody at this again. point. I don't think there's any resources we have not gained access to. Renounce I'm... that. How do you do? Uh, we have a, a potential for war still here in the last few turns. Explosive is still angry with us, so that's not a surprise based on everything that has happened in this game so far. Um, that is an ongoing problem. Explosive's continual anger and dislike of our empire. Moving right along. Coral has gained pop. Who else has gained pop? Agra has gained pop. Civil engineering has been researched, so we now have access to offshore farms and 1% money, and that... <laughs> Uh, I think, along with uh, our acquisition of the Empire State Building, has bumped our money to 10.7k per turn. We were at four or 5,000 or something like that before that, so uh, the techs late in this era become very potent. An Perhaps agreement. Humanitarian aid. Have some... Absolutely. It is mediocre, in fact, would you like I'm to trade generous. everything? I have a Perfect. proposition for you. Perfect. I would I love to just like buy it. all of this. Yes, I cannot dispute the benefit in that. I think there's a buy all button somewhere. To put it simply, <laughs> simply right. magnificent. Beautiful. Uh, that's going to bump up all of our numbers. And we are now one turn away from finishing this uranium mine, which honestly we probably should just purchase. Yeah. Just buy that. And we are now four turns away from our Mars colony. And we have 15,000 gold sitting in the bank. They're, they're barely even going to get this steel off, I think, is what's... The, the happening is going to be... I'm going to sit on this harbor right here. Although, technically, when he steals it, that'll be in their zone. So, I'll go right over here. We'll have them sit in this little nook. From a tech standpoint, none of this really matters anymore. But for the sake of, like, if you were to continue playing this game and want to kind of push things... We talked a little bit about uh, things like factory farming and pisciculture. Uh, the quarry machine. Like, these are, these are good for you. Uh, suburbs also can get you money as well as uh, additional protection if things are going poorly from a war standpoint. Uh, plus one stability per pop if you're struggling for stability is also big. Uh, again, more so you're thinking about how do I get to like communication satellites, for example, uh, to maximize my ability to get fame from these geosynchronous satellites. You also have polar satellites you can put up and get access to being able to see more of the map as well. Um, there's a lot of good things like drone assisted fertilizer plants, wind farms and solar farms if you're looking to reduce your pollution as you're going down the tree. Um, cool things like museums, which gets you science per pop, which is kind of crazy. Uh, you can really start to push things really far if you get this, this to this point in the tree. 
My current problem with how the tree works and the fact that the science race is so early in the tree and progresses so quickly is that I never get over here. I never get to any of these uh, these technologies. So I'm just going to go, I will go to communication satellites just because uh, if we can, you know, I, that's where I would probably go next if I was trying to catch up on fame. Uh, the other thing to do is try to beeline any of these last ones that get you the straight fame. Uh, if you're trying to catch up on fame in that way too. But the projects honestly give you more opportunities to get that fame. So if you are running a catch-up mechanic, you definitely want to be going for those projects uh, at the end. The one, one being the space race that we're doing, two being the geosynchronous satellites. Army so moving. Zones are being demilitarized. Burley is still at war with... B I, what, is, what wars are going on? Oh, Icarus and Burley are still at war. In multiple locations. I mean, there is fights happening all across the map still. We have territories that are still changing hands. Burley burnt something down and then claimed something over here. Been very interesting. The The games of humankind are also really influential and, and very much based on what happens geopolitically throughout the game. What empires decide they don't like each other. What empires make moves against one another that end up causing problems throughout the rest of the game. Can you clear, like we did, an empire off of your original continent so that you have your whole continent to yourself and you don't have to worry about so much of that anymore? We never ended up at a war until Plosive kind of got fed up with us kind of creeping on his territory. Finally, you know, declared war and, and we kind of squished him by using, you know, different kind of pretty sly kind of battle mechanics uh, from a war standpoint to be able to crush his armies before he could do any damage in our land. But we really didn't deal with war outside of the opening eras. And that's really, in my opinion, in humankind, that's where you want your wars to be. You want your wars to happen early in the game. If you're running late game wars, yeah, you know, typically you can gain some stars by doing that. And if you're trying to play for more of a domination style win, if you're going for uh, vassal ships or, or actual like a domination victory where you conquer everybody, absolutely. But if you're playing more kind of a standard game where you're just trying to maximize your fame gains and stuff like that, uh, in order to win the game uh, in a quick and efficient fashion. Uh, I, I feel like war is typically more effective early on than it is late. War gets really fun later on. Uh, I've just never experienced it very much. Uh, the advanced units, um, I don't really go to war with them very much. I feel like there's a lot of like eh, Cold War-esque mechanics that start to take place, right? Like you look at their armies and you're like, ah, I'm not really going to go there. That's going to be like lo huge losses on both sides. Um, so unless you have to go do something, you're really not. Um, I've typically, again, find myself in the lead most of the time, so there's this, like, there's this question of, like, why would I go and do that right now? If you're behind, war might be a good way to hamper the first place person, which Plosif did try to do, although the AI has been at war with themselves most of the game, which has caused a lot of the problems that I think they're currently seeing, which is, you know, they're fighting each other and not the person in first place. Now, we weren't in first place for quite some time. Icarus was, and everyone went to war with Icarus. They just never transitioned that into war with us. So that's always an interesting thing to, uh, to like, think about as you're going through a game of humankind. All right, boats. Boats are hanging out. Plosive's also got torpedo boats and other things in the water. I still find it interesting that Plosive has, like, separated his navies out into, like, just like, all different areas. We have 27... Okay, I'm wondering if we should, like, just for the sake of, like, buying stuff, can we buy out, no, 30k to buy a pharmaceutical at this point. Wow. I, I thought maybe we could buy some, but they scale very expensively when you have built them in the way we have. There is our Merchant Star, because uh, we are now making gold at a astronomical rate. We have reparations we can ask for across the board. Are we close to a... There are that one, two, three different battles that Burley was in that we, we could have supported. That's a lot of battles, Burley. How close are we on diplomacy? We're not that close to the next. I was going to say we could just go renounce everything uh, just to try to maximize fame. But uh, again, we have the fame lead that we need. Uh, looks like Nox has not even entered the contemporary area yet as well. Two turns until that gets stolen. Two turns until our end game condition is met. So we'll just be hanging. Urum growing in pop, Palataputra growing in population. And now you can start to see that we started to put in a few barracks. We started to put in a few infrastructures that increased our detection ability. And now 
Um, we have started to detect stealth units, which is nice. Concealed foreign units are present in Gomeza. 13 turns remain until they are revealed. Um, so we know that there is an army now in that space uh, in Gomeza. There's a stealth so army here, inside your empire's more territory. More so even than this army. Now, any ideas on what they might get up to? There are more things happening, right? Even than just this army. So we know there's also a stealth army there. New doctrines are in effect. All right, what did we get? What did we get? We like this one. Plus two science on research quarter is nice. All of these are relatively speaking good. Um, and then, yeah, so I don't know which ones we got. I guess all of them. All of them must have updated because I think they update every 20 turns. All right. Perfect. An agreement? Benefit from An alliance closer, proposal? Don't you think? Aren't you at war with Burley though? It may though? be difficult to stomach. You're at war, oh my gosh, you're at war with everyone but me. It, no wonder you're asking for an alliance. You're at war with everyone else in the game. I'm gonna counter that. If you give me money. I cannot accept this as is, oh. but a modest contribution might change my mind. Not so much. I'm sorry. Sorry we couldn't come to an arrangement. I'm sorry, but no deal is better than a bad deal. I, look, it was it was a fair offer. You're at war with everyone. That's a very risky alliance proposal. Okay, I, to be honest, I believe uh, we have one turn and then uh, kind of a final turn. Once this launches, I think you get, it like, triggers the end, right? Um, so we'll be walking through kind of end game scenarios here and looking at kind of probably what will be the end of our, our, our series here. So let's go ahead and end turn, and we'll we'll see this Mars colony get launched. They also researched geosynchronous satellites, so we can get other projects started if we're again we're continuing. There is a scientist star as well. Oh, did that not finish? That did the project didn't finish. It said one turn, and then not so much. What just happened? Population starving in four cities? Did someone just declare war on me? Unfortunately, oh, he made, he this got the claim time, in. you are merely a bystander. You got the claim in? Apparently that cost me... Did that break a bunch of my trade routes or something? Were a bunch of my trade routes running through here? How would so many of my cities have gone into a starvation state? That was very fast starvation state. Something, something very strange just that they were at plus like a gazillion. Check our trade. Ah, yes. I suppose I have some time to spare for you. I'll open up the trade. I'm gonna open up the trade network thing. What, what happened? One blockage, but nothing else is happening. Everything else should be fine. How strange. Oh, we did lose. Possibly some access? Oh, I'm very confused. I have no idea how our empire just flipped a little bit like that. That will be interesting to kind of analyze a little bit. We just, we're going to lose pop in a bunch of cities now, which was not the case. We literally just cycled through all of them. They were all doing just fine. I knew a bunch of them grew, but not by, their numbers weren't that close. So something strange happened when this territory got acquired, I think. Perhaps also because Burley and Icarus are at war, we had more kind of breakages happening of our lines, like, temporarily. So, interesting. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, kind of sit on this turn. I was not expecting that, but in the game of humankind, weird things happen towards the end. Okay, so we have access to geosynchronous geo satellites now. Again, I think probably you start to press for... Some of these, uh, you know, mechanized harvesting probably is good. Automa automation is good. So those are things you'd probably tech to in the end. Turn 260. And there is our completed interplanetary expedition. A phenomenal achievement of civilization-wide ingenuity. Yeah, again, you get like, and there's more fame upon more fame, upon more fame upon more fame here, right? And a dozen super tankers worth of coffee. There... We got the, the project, then we got the first to complete it, right? So you're just, like, stacking fame at this point. Um, and I don't think this actually changes at all. Like, it's still... It's just sitting, right? Um, Agra gained pop. But Urim, Quatu, and Palatapucha all lost population. 
Uh, again, maybe there's spy actions going on in those particular cities. That's entirely possible, I suppose. Three spy actions going on simultaneously. I guess that's possible. Um, we got people are, are... Wait, was that... Somebody is... Oh, it's an, it was an ambush. All right. Let's take a look at what we're doing. Across the Empire, we got our boats defending our lands. Uh, we could put in the geosynchronous satellite in two turns if we were to so want to press our fame gains, which honestly, we could just do it, right? Like, we could just put this in. Like this, maybe, like, somewhere in the south. On this. We're right here. That's actually kind of cool. Put it right there. And then let's put multiple cities on it, just to make sure we get it done. There we go. We'll one turn in. We'll one turn in our geosynchronous satellite. Perfect. Put a pharmaceutica down. Do it. More pharmaceuticas. Alright, here it is. Our option to end the game at the end of next turn. The Red Planet. Nine short months after they left Earth forever, spacefarers from your great empire have completed the staggering journey across the cold, dark reaches of space to arrive on Mars. The team is in high spirits. The first phase of the establishment of a permanent colony on the planet proceeds well, and the opportunities for discovery and enrichment are near endless. With your empire bestriding two worlds now, your dominance is near irrefutable. The only question is, do you wish to let history judge your reign now, or do you wish to play with your rivals some more? So you get the opportunity, and I like this about humankind as well, you can end the game, triggers an endgame condition at the end of the next turn, so people have opportunities to gain a little bit more fame, or you can enjoy your, your spoils, and you get pushed on the science axis here. You also get a thousand science, a thousand influence, and a thousand gold. Uh, it's not really super awesome numbers, to be honest. Like, when you choose not to end the game and this is all you're getting, uh, that's kind of a bummer. I would, if this was worth fame, I think if it was also worth, like, some number of fame, like 50 fame or something like that, I think that would be highly valuable because then if you were actually trying to catch up to somebody and maybe that person didn't have what it take to to get the red planet condition, the the end game condition here, then that would you would select this, right? So if you were not ahead in fame, which we are, if you were not ahead in fame, you would you would pick enjoy because you want to continue the game to try to catch up in fame. I, I like that because your end game triggering condition of the space race, you could do all of it and you could collect all the fame from it. And then if you're not winning still, you can actually say, no, we're not gonna, we're not gonna end the game. I'm gonna take the benefits of this. I'm gonna go pursue additional fame gains somewhere and then wait for the next end game condition. Now that becomes kind of interesting because this end game condition is gone now at this point, right? For you, you can't trigger it. I don't, I think that other people still can, but I'm not sure if they can trigger, but because I think everyone can get this. So I think that it can still be triggered by other people, but you're then pursuing other endgame conditions, whether that's getting to the end of the tech tree, vassalization, domination, uh, pollution, whatever that other endgame condition you are is, but you lose control, right? You lose control of being able to end the game. But if you're behind in fame, that's what you want anyway, right? Now, but then now, now you don't know when the game might end when you choose that, but I would love to see this be worth just a smidge more, because if you're ever doing this and you are behind, fame is what you actually want. I mean, this all these things help you, but fame is what you really want here. All right, we're going to choose end, and we will confirm that. And now we will press our end turn button. Uh, we get the, till the end of the next turn uh, is when the final fame calculations will be made. So we'll see if we can maximize any stars here at the very end of our episode. Some more pop loss, so that's... That's uh, interesting. We got our eye in the sky. There will be no hiding from King Maddish Moose. The Cubans, now the world's first satellite is in orbit. Satellite launches provide permanent vision over the map, making it increasingly difficult to hide strategic decisions. Uh, this is valuable. Uh, the, the satellites are valuable if you want to see what your, your enemies are doing, particularly in these late game uh, pieces when you might have armies moving that you might need to know where they're going. Um, that is, uh, it, it is useful and it does net you fame and things like that as well. The end of your journey, this is your last turn. The space race is won. You will be remembered as a mythical Maddish Moose. I always get that one. I'm not sure what triggers like the title component there, but I like the triple M. The mythical Maddish Moose works for me. Uh, we got pop loss in multiple cities again. I'm not like, I'm not sure why. Alliance broken. Burley and Plosive have ended their alliance. Interesting. Another alliance, wait, is that a war ending or what was that? 
end of a war. The war between Icarus and Plosif has ended, so that's a, a final geopolitical While there are three places on the winner's podium, number one currently belongs to you. Thanks, Mr. You Nerd. You have carved a legend that will stand forever. I appreciate that. All right, let's see what happened in this little fight. So, Icarus... What is this? Icarus got this city, but Plosif got this one? They made a city switch. And fascinating. I mean, Icarus is Icarus is in a lot of trouble at this point. The, the person who was once dominating this game and had been winning for a very long time is essentially now, uh, like, just gone. Uh, between the war with Burley and losing territory over here and here, and now losing a war, it looks like, also with Plosif. Uh, there's a lot of territory that has been kind of kicked around. Uh, Plosif... Plosif and Icarus used to split this territory, and in fact, if you recall, Plosif was actually the vassal of Icarus at one point. Icarus had taken over most of this land and had a huge claim. All of this uh, pretty much was his on the New World. Uh, that all kind of fell apart for Icarus's AI in this game, interestingly, uh, and now Burley and uh, Plosif have kind of taken over that role. So, very interesting, uh, that war ending on our final turn here. Our boats, which have just been sitting here for a great amount of time, will continue to just sit here on the final turn. We got a bunch of cities that could do stuff. Uh, probably we just put them on... I don't know. I guess we put them on Impreza as well. We could put in... I betcha we might be able to get in. We get in our polar... I don't think we'd be able to get this in, even with all of our cities on it. Uh, but it'd be close, maybe. Yeah, it's not gonna... We're not gonna quite get there even if we switched all our cities to it, but that's fine. Again, just as a demonstration, like, that's probably where you'd be going to gain additional fame pieces as you were going through the game. Uh, we have the official end game button here. Uh, we'll walk through what the end screen looks like. We'll walk through all the stats and things like that after the ending video here. Uh, but humankind difficulty conquered in this Let's Play series. Bask, bask in uh, the, the narrator's narration of the end of our game. First among equals, peerless among peers. Without inflating your ego too much, it must be said that you have claimed the mythic place in the tumultuous history of humankind. You will be remembered as a leader that excelled at many things, not one. Your fame was due to the balance of your skills. You were also one of those who managed to build a wonder. Several. For this alone, you deserve to be remembered, if nothing else. Above and beyond all this, one thing you have left to posterity is a healthy, green planet with mere traces of pollution. Your fame also derives from your religious role. You persevered as a leader of a faith in these difficult times. One more testament to your perseverance. Part of your legacy was being involved in the longest war in history. Congratulations. Hey. Under your guidance, the thrilling tale of humankind has been rewritten in your own words. There may be future adventures and deeds, and even grander scope for this grand story. Regardless, you have left a great mark and answered the question. How far will you push humankind? Not sure, like, it's, it's, it's all customized what the narrator says there, but I hear a lot of the same things most of the time. That was loud. Final standings. Burly overtaking Icarus for second place late in the game. Best era for both Burly and myself for the early modern. You can see Icarus had uh, best era earlier and was kind of falling away at that point. Uh, substantial lead for us uh, here on Humankind Difficulty against these uh, AI personalities. Uh, and a lot of these AI personalities are, are pretty high level AI personalities as well. Um, so I think again, the AI personalities you choose do impact the game because they have different like bonuses and things structured towards them that makes the them harder to play against than kind of your standard uh, AIs typically. So uh, we got some we had some interesting personas in our game. We'll switch that up and, and do some of the same and some different probably for our next series. Um, but there are our final standings. We'll go ahead and walk through our our empire at least on on this sequence. Neolithic Age, 
stayed. Stayed for a bit. We got all of them, right? Quite a few third level stars here, but not as much as I usually see, probably. Again, only three of the top level stars here, interestingly, so we were moving up at a relatively good pace here. Our time spent as the Norseman. This is this looks a little bit more like it. Four top level stars. Usually that's kind of what I'm going for. One, two, three, four, and a fifth one this time. So a big early modern playing as the Muggles. Industrial went pretty well too. Four. Four top level stars. Couple couple two levels. And then our very short time that we spent in the Contemporary Era, we still managed to collect quite a few stars across the board. Uh, obviously, we didn't max those out at all. We'll skip the other players and take a look at some of our graphs and things here at the end. Territories controlled 30. Districts built 311. I feel like that's quite a bit. Uh, not as much as the AI typically builds, probably, but uh, we won 87 battles. I don't... Wow, that's a lot. Um, interesting. I think a lot of those little ambushes count towards that too, right? We defeated 196 units in this particular one. 22,168 final fame. Uh, our best city was a nug. That's not uh, particularly a surprise. Our longest war was against 100 games, 100 days. Uh, that was our original war, which did last for quite some time. The war for our continent, uh, which which went back and forth a couple times. Early, early game humankind on Humankind difficulty was definitely uh, a challenge. Once you got the ball rolling, easier to maintain uh, kind of that pace that you were going for and snowball a little bit into your win. Uh, we found 288 curiosities. This is a number that, to examine in your games. If you're if you're struggling or if you're not like finding that you have, um, like you're not snowballing as much as maybe you want to, honestly, curiosities can make a huge difference in games of humankind. So if you don't have your scouts out, if you don't get boats out early enough and take advantage of those curiosities that are across the map, we found 288 of those curiosities. That translates into, over the course of the game, a lot of gold. And particularly in the early game when you're discovering those curiosities and you're getting gold and fame and, uh, or sorry, gold and influence and science for them, that's really beneficial to your empire. So if you're not getting out and finding those curiosities, make sure make sure you're doing that because it does make uh, it does make a difference. Uh, you can't see it, but longest ideology was regulationism. I don't even know what that ideology is, but cool. Um, you can also we can also check through everybody else. Um, you can kind of look at uh, kind of everything that happened with them. You can see districts built only eighty one to R three eleven. Districts built for Burley, 347 districts built. 207 battles won. Burley was was boring. Substantial amount. Not, not much. Not much happened in first Sarge. Got eliminated early. So Burley was actually a very aggressive, like, Plosif was, like, pushing people, but Burley was the one who ended up with battles won and units defeated. Icarus was right there as well. So there's a lot of interesting, a lot of interesting things happening here uh, in the game. Let's take a look at my statistics. You can see fame. It took us all the way until the end of the early modern era before we uh, crossed paths with Icarus. You can see or Icarus had gained a substantial lead uh, here after the ancient and classical era, uh, heading into or right, I believe that's the the era's names. Yeah, um, and and like pretty pretty substantial lead uh, at this point, right? So you can see where Icarus kind of picked up and went, and then leveling off and really starting to fall towards the end as those wars started to not go his way. Uh, we were kind of on a pretty steady trajectory. Our pace was pretty good. We had a couple moments of like pause and then and then big increases, probably as we put in, you know, some of our emblematic districts or wonders and things like that, where we see like the jumps. Um, so we had pretty steady fame gains across the board. You can see our food. <laughs> this was... This was the moment we picked the uh, Mexicans, right? We picked the Mexicans and then food. Amazingly, amazingly high uh, as we put in our Haciendas and all of that and then all the way into obviously uh, this. I don't see this right here, those last few turns, our food dropped by a ton. I'm not sure where or, or how our food dropped by that much, but it dropped by a whole bunch at the end here. Probably at broken trade route or something. Industry, you can see we pushed pretty well, but there was definitely AI were out industrying us. 
money again like we built big ben and other things we got text that that put us there but we were pretty low on money the whole game really wasn't a focal point that we had in fact we were like darn near negatives like even throughout the middle of the game uh so we really had no it, money had uh we were struggling with it the whole time uh still managed to to win the game so you don't have to have every fims sky high in order to win we kind of we we put money aside for science and industry and food, and that kind of played out that way. You can see our science kind of trucking along with everybody else. We took a, a lead here, which was really nice, and then uh, took off away from plosive. Early had some big gains at the end as well. Influence. You can see early spikes here that kind of coincide to when our fame started to go up as well. But uh, yeah, Burley Burley did some moves on influence there late in the game as well. Stability is always fun to look at. It's all over the place, right? Um, everyone getting their cities in and going up and down and then some I mean everybody takes some dips down pretty low and then I mean back up population and honestly I feel like and I've said this a lot in different videos that I've made about humankind but I population is king in humankind in my opinion and you can see where everything changes is I continue to invest in population, whereas the AI does not invest in population towards the end of the game. Uh, we split from Icarus in the middle of the third era, and really no one else even continues their population growth much past that. Like, the, what they had here is um, approximately what they had here, whereas we're putting... I mean, we had, we had an entire city... Our capital city was at 120-something-odd population. Some of their empires were not even at the population that our capital was at, right? I just think that you get so much more uh, viability out of your population when you have those really high pop numbers. So you can see that we pushed population. Pretty much we were in the lead in population the whole time. And then that exploded off the charts at the end. Now, are we maximizing that at the end? Probably not, because we were overpopulated. Although, again, picking the Cubans changed that and made it very viable. Uh, religion. Uh, we'll check the religion in the final map here at the very end, but you can see uh, we're just kind of... Icarus's religion almost fully took over, and then we made that switch uh, where we, we pushed our religion a little bit. Um, I don't really know what happened here that would have pushed our religion, because we were playing the Mexicans at that point. It must have We must have enacted some, some policies that switched and started pushing religion pretty heavily there. Research text, you can see, uh, which it's interesting that this doesn't really have much of a difference. There's not a huge split here. Uh, in fact, we didn't even pass Burley in research text until pretty late in the game. Um, so that's kind of interesting to note that despite the fact that my science was substantially higher than, than most, uh, research text was not particularly differentiating there. Trade, we, we struggled on trade. You can see how we kind of struggled in trade and, and how the AI kind of pulled away in, in money and trade at some point. We just, we, we everyone was angry at us, so we weren't trading with very many people. Although it does look like a lot of people were angry with each other and not trading with each other necessarily here in this one as well. Military, and this is where I get criticized in the comments a lot. And I accept it, I accept it. I don't focus military uh, or walls or defending or whatever, uh, for sure, right? I mean, I had the, the second to lowest military score of the entire game. I mean, we were friends with Burley the whole game, so that's pretty handy because he had the largest at the end, but look at Plosif up here. It was pretty terrifying. Uh, he, was, he was up here when he attacked us, although he was involved in two wars at two different times uh, right right, in, right here when he attacked us, right? Uh, and then he dropped off from there as we kind of took out some of his armies and things, but uh, yeah, military interesting to look at. You can see pretty much how, like, neck and neck and you, if you look at 100 games, 100 days of myself, we had our war it was a pretty even keel war. We were both kind of in the same spot. But you can see, we were pretty low even militarily compared to some of the other AI. So that, that if I'm if I'm on a continent with, you know, one of these other AI, maybe the game plays out completely differently, you know? Number of cities, you can see, we just kind of barely pull in front in, in number of cities as well. So very fascinating. I was like looking at all the components of the game and things like that. So let's hit the continue game button. I would and... characterize the level of pollution as low. Right. But that's not the same as healthy. Oh, wow. I think our pollution is really good. What where are our pollution numbers? We're, we're not polluting. We're, we're only putting plus five pollution into the into the atmosphere. Uh, Burley, Burley and uh, Plosif are just kind of polluting at will. Icarus is actually decreasing pollution, which is nice. 
Um, so we're not polluting at all. We didn't even we didn't even build any of the big buildings that require pollution that would get us huge fims gains, right? So that's something that we didn't even push that side of the thing uh, of the tree. I'd love to do a pollution game one of these days. That might be something that gets featured on the channel at some point. But let's take a look at a couple of things. I wanted to look at the religion. How how far and vast did our religion end up? Basically, the like there are some holdouts though. This land uh, is not anything, and then we have one other religion that still holds sway. Uh, but everything else, everything else belongs to madness. Fascinating. Fascinating. So our religion did end up taking over everything. We ended up with a lot of holy sites because we got donate generously, right? Uh, which gives you the extra holy sites at the end. So religion, religion went very well. Uh, how did our culture end up? Everyone ended up kind of, I mean, we so we started taking over the new world. That that makes sense. We started to, to squeeze in here and start to put the pressure on Icarus. Icarus had cultural control over the new world for most of the game. Uh, but, but as Icarus kind of fell off uh, through the wars and things, we started to make that push. But everyone kind of maintained, you know, their borders. So it's kind of messy in here because of where everyone was. But yeah, always interesting to see how that influence went over the course of the game, how our society ended up. So there is that. Um, and our final kind of empire wide numbers are uh, making 10k gold per turn, only 2,800 influence per turn. Um, obviously our capital city here, uh, just cranking numbers. I mean, this, this capital city is one of the most effective and efficient capital cities I, I maybe have ever made possibly, but I think that's largely due to those impressive pharmaceuticals. Um, so very, very interesting how this game turned out. Uh, what a fun game. What an enjoyable, uh, I, I, I love this game a lot. Um, I've really enjoyed playing it. Hopefully you all enjoyed watching as well. Thank you so much for, for tuning in for basically the entire series. If you've been with us uh, through the entire time, uh, awesome. And thank you so much for that. There will be more Humankind Let's Play series on the channel. We're going to take about a month, probably. I think I have four Sundays worth of other content that I'd like to post. There's going to be a couple of Civ 6 review videos that I post that I've worked, been working on from games that I played. There's going to be a couple of kind of one-off Humankind videos uh, that I post, including my first ever loss in Humankind. It took over two years, I believe, but I actually have now lost a couple games of Humankind um, one of them a multiplayer game, and then one of them I did actually lose to the AI. So I'll give you reviews over those two games and, and what I learned from from the scenarios. The the first ever game that I lost was, was epically hilarious. And uh, when you see what I had to contend with, I think that you'll be like, oh, that's crazy. And maybe you've seen it, but maybe you haven't. Um, I'm really excited to share that one with you here in the coming weeks as well. And then we are going to start a brand new Let's Play series for Humankind. Uh, it is going to be called, I believe, Uncommonly Common. And I'm going to focus on commons quarters for the first time in my entire humankind career. I am going to focus on choosing uh, cultures that have commons quarters as their emblematic districts or benefit commons quarters in some way, shape, or form. And I'm going to focus on enacting civics and making you know decisions throughout the game that benefit commons quarters as opposed to garrisons, which I always go the garrisons route. And so I'm gonna, it's going to be a completely different game. We're probably going to play outside of maybe the final era. We're probably going to be playing all completely different cultures that I have never personally played before in that game. I'm very excited to see if this is a viable strat. I never play it that way because I don't think commons quarters are worth it. We're going to find out because we're going to play at humankind difficulty. And we're probably going to play with a little bit of a war bend to start, because if you take a look, the initial cultures that are geared towards commons quarters are pretty militaristic or expansionist in mind. And so really, you do want to be kind of going to early war, probably, with some of those cultures. So it should be a very, very drastically different game than this one. Uh, we are going to play at humankind difficulty, and we'll see if you can make the commons quarters work to get a win at Humankind Difficulty in a game of Humankind. That will be the next Let's Play series. That will kick off in about a month. Uh, if you're not uh, following me on social media, you can follow me on uh, any of the social medias at Maddish Moose, uh, or you can look up our Discord. Uh, all of those links are available in uh, my different social media links or my Twitch page, or I believe in my YouTube page as well. Um, so you can check out when we're going to be doing stuff there, or just stay tuned here. Make sure you have your notifications on 
and uh, you're, you're subscribed to the channel so you know when we start releasing those. Videos will continue to come out on Sundays. Uh, we'll release a few again, like a month's worth of content leading into our next Let's Play series. If you have ideas about different videos or Let's Play series that you would like to see on the channel, please feel free to post those in the comments. Uh, I would love to hear what you all want to see as far as games uh, are concerned, but specifically around Humankind or other 4X genre games. I'd love to to pick up and do any series that you guys are interested in. Uh, obviously, I have my own ideas about kind of what I, the content I want to create, uh, but you have ideas. I'm always welcome to hear those ideas, uh, so you could post those in the comments as well. Thank you all so much for watching this series. I uh, hope that you've enjoyed it. I've really enjoyed playing this game. If you like the content, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and that you're subscribed. And it won't be this series, but I will see you next week Sunday for our next video.